Well, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is having a great 2019. Mine started off good. Time off, <laughs> which is always good. And then back to work on Wednesday and what? Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 30 hours. And all for the rest of the weekend. I've been doing a little work on the uh, old Johnson Viking 2 that I rebuilt some time back there was still a few things that needed to be done and one of them was to uh, install this 4 pin mic jack on the front and add a transformer a power supply board and relay so now I don't have to uh, flip the uh, plate switch up I can just simply key the microphone and put the uh, Viking 2 and transmit so I wanted to uh, go ahead and get all that done because um, there's a few guys here locally that has the Viking 2 club up on 40 meters and I was going to uh, try to get on the air and make some contacts and do a little rag chewing with them but that didn't happen when I uh, keyed the radio I, I noticed that the modulation current was very unstable so I remember you know when I rebuilt the thing everything was fine went back in and found that 20k slider resistor was open on one end and the uh, got it into the microscope and sure enough one of the wires in it was broken so I uh, went on uh, Allied's website and went ahead and ordered a couple of replacement resistors. So I can go ahead and get this thing on the air. Like I, said, I was surely hoping to get it going uh, this week so I can uh, join in some of the fun with those guys up there on 40 meters. I also have that uh, Johnson Viking uh, 122 VFO thing looks terrible but you know the insides in pretty good shape and it does work but I wanted to rebuild it now you know the outer case just looks to be in very poor shape and you see all the paint has come off of it and uh, I was going to go ahead and sit down and rebuild it and I was going to do a video on that this weekend but tied up on a few other things I still haven't made my mind up yet what I'm going to do with this front face plate. You can order a reproduction face plate. I think it's like 70 bucks. But I don't know if I want to go in. And honestly, <laughs> the functionality is not affected by the cosmetics. Yes, it would look nice if it was uh, nice and pretty, but still I got to uh, make my mind up on what to do about this thing. Now, if you go in and rebuild one of these, you know this is actually the same VFO that is used in the, uh, the Rangers and the uh, Valiants and so forth. So you do still have that Chernobyl 18k resistor in this the only difference in this there is no bait light platform or a phenolic platform for it to burn up but you still need to uh, go in and change that resistor out to a good quality uh, 18k 5 watt resistor so when we rebuild this we'll go ahead and uh, and do that also and put some new cabling on it I noticed that some of the cable on the back of this is not in that great a shape but I'd like to hear your comments below on uh, what you think I should do about this faceplate I thought about trying to scan it in and try to clean it up and print a production decal to go back on it or should I just you know bite the bullet buy the seventy dollar production reproduction plate or leave it like it is. <laughs> I know. I think some of you know how I am about cosmetic restorations, and uh, you know I always like just like the Viking 2. It's not the uh, 
the prettiest thing. It's got quite a few battle scars on it, you know, and little pits in it, but, you know, there's no rust on it. And, you know, the knobs are easily to be read, so, you know, I like stuff to look original and used. So, uh, if you would, you know, leave your comments down below what you think about what I should do with that, uh, 122 VFO. I always like to hear from you guys. And, you know, you might think, well, buddy, how do you know what to do when you got problems like this? Well, I knew that, you know, the modulator current wasn't acting right. I knew just where to go to find the information to know where to go check. Like I said, I wanted to put in the PTT circuit. I knew exactly where to go to find that information because it's already been done, and that's from Terry over at D-Lab. He's always already done videos on all that. After watching those videos, and when I saw what was going on in the meter, I knew exactly what was wrong with the transmitter. I knew that that must have been a problem in that 20k resistor, and sure enough, that's where I found it. So, you know, Terry's been a great help on this Johnson equipment. He's a wealth of information on it. So, you know, if you haven't watched his channel, go on over there, and I'll leave a link down below. So I got a notice in UPS that I had a package coming, and uh, I know I had ordered a few things from Amazon uh, here lately, and I thought I got all of them, but I noticed it said I had an Amazon package, so I uh, ran on down to UPS and picked it up, and uh, when I opened it up, I said, well, this isn't nothing I ordered, and uh, I got it here, and it says a gift for you, and it says, hi buddy, hope you find these useful, 73's from Derek, but anyway, uh, <coughs> I'm opening it up, I see there's four uh, brackets in here, so uh, I said, what is these, you know, anyway, uh, I did realize it was be a uh, mail time item but they're Pomona model 4408 as you can see and they are cable um, hangers you mount on the wall like this and you can hang your test leads or so forth in them and uh, you could probably even use them to uh, put your long screwdrivers in but uh yeah uh thank you uh very much Derek these are really come in handy as you can see uh there's uh cables hanging everywhere with homemade hangers so I will replace all those and get the uh proper ones up on the wall to hold all these test leads and you know, they're just hanging all over the ceiling. So uh, thank you very much, Derek, for that. Those are coming in real handy. So you know, I had did one live video a while back, and right after that video, I started having problems with that camera. We're talking with Bob Howell. Um, he had recommended a few things, and one of them was a uh, Logitech camera same type of camera that they would use on the ham nation shows well i went out yesterday and picked up this uh c920 pro rev cam by logitech and i tell you i am really amazed at the quality of this camera it works very nice has a uh, beautiful picture on it it's got stereo microphones and uh, the one that he recommended was about 59 bucks Unfortunately, our Office Max here did not have one in stock, but they had the C920. Now, this camera runs about $89, but it was on sale for 49 bucks. So I got this, so hopefully with this camera I can get back in doing some more live streams. It's a lot easier to do it on the uh, computer instead of trying to use my main blogging cams 
to do live streams with. And like, again, I wanted something that had good. And this thing is uh, 1080p HD. And you can uh, open it up, pull it down, and clip it right onto your uh, monitor if you like. Or you can uh, mount it right to your tripod because there's a uh, threaded hole in here to uh, mount it with. You just have to have the stud. And it fits nicely on one of my old tripods that I have here. <clears throat> this thing is a beast. It's all solid steel. And uh, it does, you know, s several different uh, adjustments and stuff on it. But it has the uh, removable insert. If I screw this thing out far enough, I can get it out to accept either a uh, three-eighths or quarter-inch. And the uh, webcam fits right on that nicely. And this thing will go up to about five foot tall, and uh, then up to another foot with the. Uh, extension here so you can go up to about six foot very very heavy duty uh, old tripod so two more pieces I got to go along with that or got to get ordered I got to get online and look at the prices and go ahead and get this stuff ordered and one of them is the Howl PR20 UT microphone to go along with it and also the Alexis multi mix 8 mixer and this hooks right into your USB on your computer and you can run different styles of microphones um, through your computer system so that is going to be a must to have um, each unit is around $100, $125 somewhere in that I'm going to get the cablings for it and it should make for a pretty decent uh, equipment for uh, live streaming and uh, Skype chatting or, or whatever so yeah we'll be adding those uh, here in the future and my last video for 2018 I had mentioned some more upgrades that uh, I was going to do and I got an email from one of my viewers and good friends that wishes to remain anonymous told me he had something coming so uh, turn around and look my wife she's been off all week due to uh, some bad headaches but uh, she was home all day yesterday and USPS came by left nothing and took off and uh, I got the track of information and look and said you know I don't understand what is up with USPS anymore they uh I get packages all the time and most of the time I have to go down and pick them up regardless of anybody's home or not it's just it's crazy but anyway uh, <laughs> he uh, had told me he was sending this in so I wanted to open this up and share this with you as uh, this is the first time I've seen it I already know what it is and I think you're going to find it very very interesting I appreciate it very much. Um, again, you know, I said I was going to do some upgrading, and he's already helped to uh, start with that. Let me go ahead and get this out of the package. And look what was sent in. This is the Canon. It's the Vixia HFG10. Now one of the reasons why I wanted this particular camera because this is the uh, same camera that Dave Jones used to use quite a bit over at the EV blog. Now later on he did have some problems with his, I think uh, he had some issues with it uh, recording videos but you know it don't matter what you get you're going to get some faults but you know even on his website he recommended the uh, HFG10 Vixia Canon so <laughs> thanks to uh, our anonymous friend and viewer looks like we now have one let's go and get it opened up and see what we got in the box and it says it's uh, the kit I don't 
know what all comes in the kit, but we'll open it up and find out. Warranty information. We got a three quarter inch user manual, some software. Power supply. Power cord for the power supply. Some more CA cables, mini USB. piece I'll have to look at the manual to find out what that is. Here's another power supply cable. Battery. Got a lens hood. That'll work real good, keeping your hands from having to be tied up. If you're not moving the camera, have a HDMI cable. The Vixia HF310 by Canon. Has a uh, dual SD cards. And if you want to see a uh, good review on this, uh, there's plenty of reviews on YouTube about it. But, uh, it's very, very nice camera. I got the uh, GTN plugged into the charger and got the battery installed. And I'm going to go ahead and let it charge up. Looks like I do have to run to town and get some uh, SD cards for this. I uh, got to look in the manual to see what they recommend that it needs. But yes, I really think this will make a good addition to the uh, channel now you know I've been happy with the uh, Sony and the Panasonic camera I have of you know no complaints with the video quality or even the audio quality of either of the, of the cameras in fact this Sony is kind of sensitive to audio and sometimes when I'm working on radios and you got a tone uh, you know these cameras are built in there's no uh, audio input jacks. It does have HDMI out, but you know it's, it's picking up directly off the camera, and we're not able to adjust the uh, the camera for my voice to whatever I'm working on here on the bench. So that makes it uh, a little difficult. And you can see the comparison from the size of my. Um, Samsung, I keep calling it Panasonic, but it's Samsung um, camera compared to this uh, Canon Vixia. It's, uh, I mean, no comparison in size whatsoever. It's, you know, this camera's a lot bigger. Now the uh, Sony is about the same size as this. Not much difference in the uh, size. Like I say, they've been great cameras. They just, you know, lack a lot of stuff that we need um, I like to be able to put macro lenses on and this and that so I don't have to switch different cameras around for getting close up shots with the Canon we'll be able to do that one thing I've always wanted to be able to do while I'm here in the shop is to uh, <clears throat> actually look at what I'm recording on a bigger screen it's been very difficult to do that with the 
Samsung and the uh, Sony with the uh, Canon shouldn't be no problems because like I say we do have uh, video audio um, composite cables and we have a uh, you know HDMI so it'd be real easy to just plug into a uh, TV or another monitor so we can sit here and actually see on a bigger picture of what we're recording a little piece that fell out when I first opened it is a stylus and it's used for actually writing on the screen of the uh, Canon very interesting okay I did shoot a little bit of video with this camera and uh, went ahead and tried the normal now with the uh, Samsung and the Sony I just hooked the USB cable in plug it into the computer and boom I can transfer files the Canon's a little different um, actually you're supposed to use software and when using the software I come up with cannot detect camera check connections blah 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 so I got a little bit of reading and stuff to do on this and figure out just how to use this thing like it's supposed to be um, now the part of the problem could be in this PC so I have to grab my laptop and load the software on it and see how it does but uh, anyway this should be a great camera just you know gotta take go through a learning curve learn how to use it and operate it and do all that good stuff with it okay so that problem is solved I can now uh, transfer video files from the camera to the computer and I didn't have to have any of that software that came with it <laughs> you connect the uh, USB cable to the computer and you have to connect the power cable it will not go into transfer mode until that power cable is connected once the power cable is connected it then come up and ready to transfer so I grab the laptop and there's the files ready to uh, transfer over to the PC now I just thought that was very interesting um, the way that they do this but you know it's just like I say it's a learning curve got to uh, get in there and find out how to do stuff okay so uh this is being shot with the new canon like i say always been happy with the uh two small cams but this camera here should uh really 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 make a difference now i just got this on auto i haven't played with any of the settings yet um i was thinking that was supposed to be a uh vu meter on the uh display here and one thing I do like about it, the display on this is that's about as big <laughs> as these cameras are in size. As you can see, uh, the Sony has, you know, it's about two and a half by inch and a quarter display on it. And the uh, Samsung is just about the same, you know, not much difference in them at all. <clears throat> but yes this uh just this display screen on this canon is uh so much nicer and uh one thing i like about it is this remote so i can sit here and zoom in without even touching the uh camera itself and i know that when i'm shooting videos with these cameras y'all probably can uh can hear that when I reach up and hit the uh, zoom the Canon takes care of that problem so we'll see just how the video is on this anyway this weekend I was hoping to uh, get a chance to do a review on a drone this is the uh, 
Sky Viper. It's the V2450, and it'll be the first GPS streaming drone with autopilot that I have ever tried. So <laughs> it does have a uh, a camera on it, and you can connect it to an app on your phone. So because I didn't get a chance to do a review this week, it has been been warm but raining and then today is cold and winds at about 25 to 35 miles an hour so no fun playing with a drone this week maybe uh next week will you know be a little better but yes i'm excited to uh get this drone and get it in the air and see how it does all right so there you go guys more nice stuff here for the shop Big thanks to uh, Derek for sending in those Pomona lead holders. Them things are really going to come in handy. I've already put two of them up and uh, have them full of leads already. And to our anonymous viewer for sending in that wonderful uh, Canon Vixia HF. G10 that thing is just awesome it should really make for some uh, nice video recordings in the future it's just awesome so uh, again we'll uh, we'll be getting some more stuff going here uh, so we'll be able to do some more live streaming and some uh, future stuff that we'll be showing you in the future by using this uh, little Logitech camera I think y'all will enjoy that as it comes along and like I say when the weather breaks I want to do a uh, review and flight test of that Sky Viper drone it ought to be pretty fun to fly and we'll see how it goes you know a big thanks to all you guys that have supported this channel and for sending in these nice wonderful things we surely appreciate it Again, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I promise my next videos will be a uh, repair of some type. So much in here to, uh, to work on and get going. So, uh, yeah, we'll get back in some, some repairs. In fact, we might go ahead and do the uh, remove that VFO out of the uh, Kenwood T599 and go ahead and get that up and going. Alright, leave your comments down below. I'll have some links down below over to D-Lab. Go ahead and, if you haven't watched them, go ahead and watch some of Terry's videos. Has some great stuff on there. Also, uh, leave the links down below to the website and on Patreon. And for the rest of the day, y'all have a good day, and we'll see you in the next video.